How now, fairy, whither wander you? Over hill, over dale, thorough bush, thorough briar, I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon of sphere. And I serve the fairy queen, to do her orbs upon the green. I must go and seek some dewdrops here, and hang a pearl in every cowslip's ear. Farewell, thou lob of spirits, I'll be gone. Our queen and all her elves come here anon. The king doth hold his revels here tonight. Take heed, the queen come not within his sight. For Oberon is passing fell and wrath, because that she, for her attendant, hath a lovely boy, stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling. And jealous Oberon would have the child knight of his train to trace the forest wild. But she, perforce, withholds the loved boy. And now they never meet in grove or green by spangled starlight sheen. But they do square that all their elves for fear creep into acorn cups and hide them there. Either I mistake your shape and making quite, or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow. Are not you he that frights the maidens of the village tree? Those that hobgoblin call you in sweet puck. You do their work and they shall have good luck. Are not you he? Thou speakst aright. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest with Oberon and make him smile when I a fat and bean-fed horse beguile in neighing in likeness of a filly foal. And sometime lurk I in a gossip's bowl in very likeness of a roasted crab. And when she drinks, against her lips I bob and on her withered dewlaps pour the ale. And then the whole choir hold their hips and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but rum fairy, here comes Oberon. Oh. And here my mistress would that he were gone. <laughs> Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. How now? How are you, my dear? Jealous Oberon. Fairies away. I have forsworn his bread and company. Harry, rash wanton, am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. But I know when thou hast stolen away from fairyland to amorous Philida. But why are you here? Come from the farthest steps of India. <laughs> but that thy bouncing Amazon, thy buskin mistress, thy warrior love, to Theseus must be wed. And you have come to bid their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania, glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus? These are the very forgeries of jealousy. Never since the middle summer spring have we met on hill or dale, forest or mead, or in the beached margins of the sea. But with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. Thus the wind, piping to us in vain, as in revenge, has sucked up from the seas contagious fogs, which falling upon the land have every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. The ox has therefore stretched his yoke in vain, the plowman lost his sweat, and the green corn is rotted ere its youth attained a beard. No night! is now with him nor Carol blessed. And the moon, governess of the floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air. And through this distemperature, we see the seasons alter. Hoary-headed frosts fall in the fresh lap of the crimson rose. Chiding autumn, angry winter, change their wanted liveries. And the mazed world, by their increase, 
knows not which is which. And the same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissent. We are the parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. A fairyland buys not this child of me. His mother was a votress of my order, and in the spiced Indian air by night, full oft has she gossiped by my side, and sat with me by Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood. <laughs> and we have laughed to see the sails conceive and grow big-bellied in the wanton wind. And she, with pretty and with swimming gait following, her womb enriched with my young squire, would imitate and sail upon the land. But she, being mortal, of this boy did die, and for her sake do I rear up this boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Well, chance till after Theseus' wedding day. But if you would patiently dance in our rounds and see our midnight revels, go with us. If not, shun me, and I will spare thy haunts. Give me that boy, and <sighs> I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away. We shall chide down right if I longer stay. Well, go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle puck, come hither. Thou rememberest since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song. That very time I saw, but thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid, all armed. A certain aim he took, and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. Yet marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell <coughs> upon a little western flower before milk white now purple with love's wound. Fetch me that flower, the herb I showed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make or man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb, and be thou here again ere the leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girl around the earth in forty minutes. <laughs> Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania when she is asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing she then waking looks upon, be it on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible. 